We are recording. Okay. So now I am going to language that's been sent to me by Jennifer Moist, in which I as always mislay, but uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Uh, member, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, following the instructions on the Amhersttown website, www.amherstma.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. I now call this meeting to order. Okay, and I will um, say that the town is recording this meeting and if anyone else is doing so at this time, please notify us now. All right, and hearing none, we will move along with our agenda. Um, let me share okay. my screen. So what would you say if somebody said they were, were recording it? Um, so if someone else is recording, we just need to be aware. Um, that's you know up to them whether or not they want to do that, but we just have to be aware of it because there's a um, there's laws about being recorded without being notified. Yes, so. it's called it. Um, we used we used to call it when I was working as a prosecutor. That's called I believe that's called the wiretap statute. That is correct. Yes, and that's not allowed unless the other parties agree. You need mutual that's, consent yes. in Massachusetts. Yes. yes. Okay. So yes. if you, for example, wanted to wanted to uh, record a, a phone call that came into your house without telling the person, yep. that would be a violation of the wiretap statute. Oh, yes. Good. Yes. Good. Okay. All right. So oh, yeah. I will share and get this. Uh, what do we want here? Do we want? Do you do you all have the agenda? I'm drawing a blank as to what I normally show you. I think yes. I'll show you these because you all have the agenda. Three this is the minutes. The agenda and the minutes to us yesterday. Okay, great. So then we will go down the agenda. Uh, there looks to be no uh, public participation, but we can leave that open if everybody is okay with that and move along to approve the minutes from the February 10th, 2022 meeting, which I have up here for everyone to see. Gentlemen, have you had a chance to look at the minutes? Yes. Yep. Okay. Move I for approval. Okay. Move for approval. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Then we, we have the uh, motor vehicle excise abatements. Um, I can pass that along to Teresa if anybody has any questions about these in particularly. Looks like somebody was busy with an adding machine. <laughs> um, as you'll see, these are mostly Commonwealth UMass, there's some others mixed in there as well, but um, Amherst College, this was just the big, big commitment that went out at the beginning of the year. Does anybody know what black squirrel is? So I think it's a um, bed and breakfast or something. I'm not really sure, a farm. Okay, just wondered. All right, I'll move these quickly then so we can get to the bottom here today, maybe. <laughs> um, so this is excise weeks from February 2nd to the 28th. So it's the whole month and that's partially why it's as big as it is. Um, so here we have, uh, oh, it's got, it. did this have two years worth, Teresa? Is that why yes. there's two yes, months that, there? Yeah. Okay, so the first, uh, 1,011 abatements, I believe, was the abatements that were done for fiscal year 2021. And that was in the amount of $80,430.93. And then the second portion of this commitment was 100, uh, excuse me, 1,018 abatements in the amount of $81,145. So does that mean we didn't do abatements last year for these or what? Why are we doing um, no, th this is so this is part of the excise that is sent to us every year by the registry of motor vehicles. And the first commitment that comes in uh, for, of the of the calendar year is usually pretty large. So this is an abatement that we have to process every year for vehicles. 
Um, we're looking into, I think, as we mentioned last time, we're looking into a way to actually just mark the university exempt. So we don't have to process every single abatement. Uh, we can actually just mark them exempt. Yeah, they'll show up on the commitment as being there, but they'll be exempt. And so you won't see them um, being included in the totals for taxable. So why, do you have, why do you have two years? So um, there were two. So um, there's also another commitment that comes through at the same time for the end of the calendar year 2021. Um, and so generally when that happens, we get some abatements on those as well. Um, but every person or business or anybody who owns a vehicle that's registered in the state of Massachusetts has uh, three months or one year after the bill has been paid, uh, three years or one year after the bill has been paid to process an abatement. So if somebody just somehow forgot about it and just got around to it, because maybe they got an excise tax bill for this year, or if they said, oh, I forgot to do this last year, they have the ability to do that. So that it could have been a number of things why we had two years there. So it sounds like the University of Mass forgot about it last year. Nope, this is one that we have to process every year for them. Um, so they could have had some new vehicles that they bought at the end of calendar year 2021, which is maybe why we had some for 2021 for them. But the majority of theirs, I think, was 2022. Um, you'll see over on the left-hand side, the, the calendar year there is listed. I can go back up to the top and see. Oh, that's all right. Okay. No, no, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do that. Okay. To go back up just oh. like so just so I can understand what it. Yep. So see, there's this small chunk oh, here okay. um, of 2021 abatements. And actually, it looks like there's just two from UMass. Um, oh. And it, so chances are they got those those vehicles new uh, at the end of calendar year 2021. Um, seeing the amount of 139.07, it was probably two um, brand new vehicles. That was probably for could have been two months, could have been a month, depending on what the vehicle was. It looks like it was a Ford uh, of some sort. So my guess would be that's probably one or two months worth of, of, um, of bills. And then you'll see all the rest of that was everything. So you'll, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. So you'll see that there's three years of abatements here. There's a 2020 bill that we received an abatement request from Nissan Infinity. Four, so we processed I'm that sorry. one too. So. I didn't even see that one up there. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Okay, so at the totals, I thought we were approving two totals. We're just approving one total. Well, the, the, yeah, the big amount at the bottom, the very last total will be the total of this 11798 for 2020, the 551,054 for 2021, and then the uh, larger amount for um, 22. Okay, I got it. Which is the 22 is pretty much uh, mostly the from the commitment. To from the first registry. commitment, yeah, for the first commitment of this year. So the 81,145 is the total of all three of those years. Okay, got it. Sorry about that. I goofed that up in the beginning. So my apologies. All right, I, I move to approve our signatures on that. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. All right. We've got a little bit of an easier one here. <laughs> um, so we have, again, two years. So we have 2021 and 2022. And this is for March 1st through March 4th. Um, so we have the one for 2021 single for $29.06. And, and then the total for 2022 is five sixty one dollars uh, 29, and 29 cents, totaling. Five ninety and thirty five cents for this particular week. Move to approve those abatements with our signatures. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. All right. Catching up with you. I, I didn't get my notes done ahead of time this week. Okay. All right. Um, so the only other thing I'm going to stop sharing for the moment. The only other thing that we have on the agenda today for the um, public section of the meeting is just the principal assessor update and to verify our next meeting. So I will go ahead quickly and give you an update as to what's going on so, here. So 
point of information, I saw you several weeks ago walking around the South Amherst Common, and I wondered what you were doing, but I did <laughs> not want to enter in, in the early, relatively early morning, and I wondered what you were up to. Yes, so I was completing an inspection uh, for an over-evaluation, so I can give you more details specifically once we get into the executive session. Um, okay. But basically what I was doing was completing a... Um, an inspection of a property. So I did an interior um, at that particular house. I had wanted to take a picture of the uh, exterior of the house. And I really don't like to get my car in the picture. Um, I try to, when I'm taking photos, it's sort of an unwritten rule that you just don't get people. So if there's people in a front yard of a house, you just ignore that photo for now and go back to it later. Um, or if you have really good software, you can Photoshop them out, but it's just best not to have the picture with people no matter what. Um, and so I sort of run that rule with everything. So I like to try to get just the things that we can't move or sometimes, you know, the people don't have a garage or something like that. But I tried to get all of my things out of the photo. So I had parked in the center at, at, the, um, at the common and I had walked back across the grass to get a photo of the house without a car in the driveway. Okay, you, you parked right next to me and I was doing un, working on oh. the as an <laughs> undistinguished aging white male. And I watched you <laughs> at work and I didn't say anything and I just was wondering what that was. What that was. So yeah. Gotcha, that's what I was doing. You were very concentrated, <laughs> you didn't notice me at all. I didn't. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Um, I, I often, you know, a lot of times I can pull out of the driveway to a point where I'm still in the driveway, you know, within, I'm not in the middle of the road and yeah. I can get out and take a picture. Um, but sometimes, and, and sometimes I can just pull down the road a little bit, being that it was a bit of a tight road. And, and I knew that there was a parking spot right there. I just figured, you know, so sometimes you'll see me doing stuff like that. Sometimes you'll see me right in front of the house. Sometimes you'll see me, you know, at the top of the driveway or something. Um, but that's what I was doing. So I enjoyed that proof that you were doing your job at our, uh, for our taxpayer dollars. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, along the lines of me doing my job, my assessor update today is very quick. Um, we are finishing up on the overvaluations. We have a bunch of them to go through in executive session. And I think I have maybe only three or four left that we'll talk about in the next meeting. Um, some of those are just the more complicated ones and I just haven't finished them yet. And then there's one that I'm waiting on uh, the applicant to be ready to do an inspection. Um, and we may have to get an extension on that, which I can again explain more so in executive session on that particular one. Um, otherwise, Teresa has been working her tail off on personal property. We've gotten in a ton of form of lists and so she's been working really hard on entering those. Um, we have gotten in the income and expense. The deadline has passed for all of our forms. So the income and expense, three ABCs, um, form of lists, anything else? What am I forgetting? Form of list, three ABCs, income and expense. I think those are the things. Yeah, just those three. Those three right now. Um, so we have, our deadline has passed. It was March 1st. So we're now starting to enter all the information that we have. Um, what was the second one, ABC? Three ABC. So that is for a uh, nonprofit organizations. Oh, okay. Um, are we so, seeing more? Are we seeing more um, personal properties because folks are working at home more? Do you um, think? What do you think? I, I don't. I mean, I don't know if the piles that we have are look like normal. Um, but I, I would say if people were working from home more often, we would probably see less of them because maybe the business has shut down altogether and they've gotten rid of their items. Uh -huh. um, in many cases, that's not the, the uh, scenario. They still have their office space. And so if the space still belongs to the business, even if it's empty, it's taxable. Um, Teresa and I actually did a seminar the other day with the Hampshire County Assessors Association all about personal property. Um, and in the beginning, I thought, oh my God, this is so complicated. But in the end, I felt much more confident in my ability to be able to assess personal property. It was a great seminar on how to assess personal property and how to do an inspection to find personal property. Um, so that was really, really helpful. And you didn't um, invite us? You didn't invite us? You should have gotten the email, I think, if you're really? a member of oh, the okay. MAA. But, <laughs> oh, all right. um, but was, there video? Uh, was there a video of it? There was, but they didn't. For some reason, they didn't record it, which was oh. it's too bad because it's nice oh, to be no. able to go back and look at those. So, I would like um, to see you in action. But I can't. Well, I didn't say anything. <laughs> okay. 
I can certainly, um, if you guys want to, we can set up a, a, a time to do, uh, to talk about personal property. And I can certainly relay that information to you and um, also show you the copies of the slides that we had received from them as well. So that's, you know, if, if that's something of interest, we can certainly do that. Um, so uh, we're working on those things. David was in the other day. We worked on some supplemental um, uh, supplemental bills that I've been waiting to get the occupancy permits on. So we got those completed. Um, he'll be back next week on Wednesday to work on the RFPs for the cyclical and revaluation inspection um, process that we have to go through with the state. Um, so we have to put out a uh, request for bids for help with those projects because those are massive projects. Uh, I've been in contact with the DOR and they're aware of where we're at with all that stuff and um, just waiting to hear when we actually send those the paperwork out for bid so that people can um, bid on that that position. Um, Is it a and, position or a project? It's a project. So it's, it's a position temporarily working with us, um, like a, a contracted service. Um, so I guess I shouldn't call it a position. I should call it a contracted service. Um, we and so once properties. Right. And once that's completed, um, you know, that that service will be no longer needed for that particular item. Right. Um, so there's a line item in our budget in, in your budget for that. There's not a line item in our budget. So the way that Amherst does it is they put it as a capital um, expenditure because it's something that only happens um, with the reval every five years and with the cyclicals every 10. And so the way the budget works is that if I put a, a budget item line in our uh, specific budget, we have to use it that fiscal year. And that, so I, it's much more complicated to do it that way because then you have to estimate how much it's going to cost you per year instead of the total amount that you need for, um, you know, the, the, the whole project. Mm -hmm. So much easier to do it with the capital project because then you can get funded for the whole thing. And um, if it takes multiple fiscal years, you still have that funding available to you. So you don't have to worry about trying to get more because you didn't use it all and so on and so forth. So, um, but otherwise, I think, you know, I mean, duties as normal, excise abatements, um, you know, people coming in with questions, emails, things like that. Um, pretty much normal right now. Uh, it's, it's, it's quieting down slightly to get ready to ramp back up in the springtime when it gets warm and we can go out and do our building permit inspections and all that. So not a whole lot to say today. Gentlemen, any questions? No. no. All right. Oh, do we pick a date? So yes, we can pick a date for our next meeting. Um, I think, let me just look at the calendar. So we have the 10th. So right now, it looks like it would fall on 14th. Thursday, the 14th. Yep. Yep. Looks like that would work for me if that works for all of you. No. Okay. All right. So we'll schedule the next meeting for the 14th of April. And that's Thursday. Is that likely in person? Um, I think it's a possibility. I think from, from what I understood the other day, they're still working on trying to figure out what to do and should have a vote by the end of, of this month. Uh, CDC and federal guidelines have given us the ability to be, not CDC, federal, federal um, guidelines have given us the ability to actually be remote or hybrid until July. Okay. Um, but it sounds like the council has been discussing what to do with that. Um, there was a meeting the other day of um, actually of non-union staff members. And that was one of the things that was discussed is, um, you know, how do we feel about the remote versus the in-person? Um, just so you know, I spoke up and I, um, I spoke to both sides of that. Um, you know, I said that Basically, uh, you know, it does make it a little harder for us because we have a lot of sensitive documents that we can't just email to each other because if it ever gets hacked, someone's financials could get out there. So it would be easier to meet in person. However, you know, if someone isn't home and they travel, um, you know, it's nice to be able to do the, the remote meetings. Also, you know, when it comes to the late night, not so much for us, but the late night meetings, it is nice to be able to do that from the comfort of your home. Yeah. Um, and I said, 
from from the bottom down, you could be in your jammies, <laughs> which is comfortable and nice. And you know, when you're in person, you can't do that. <laughs> so, but um, so I, you know, I maybe well, Richard, you got to stop coming in your pajamas. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted I just wanted to report that I'm fully clothed. <laughs> Yeah, You're not the too. Folgers guy with his yeah, right. <laughs> thigh hanging out. So, um, so anyway, so I, you know, just want to let you know that I spoke for both sides of that, um, just to be fair. Um, but anyway, I think with that being said, if there's no other uh, questions or comments that we can do in the public section, we can close the public part of the meeting and move into executive. And uh, do, don't we have to give at least a public uh, reason why we're going in the executive session? Oh, yes, yes. So in the executive session today, we will be discussing two personal exemptions and a pile of uh, overvaluations. All right. And then okay. uh, directly after executive session, we intend to adjourn the meeting. Right. So with all that having been said, I move that we go into executive session. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, Aye. Okay, so That's we will it. close public comment and I will stop recording. Is there mm -hmm. any other things that we want to put out to the public before we go directly into executive session? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna go ahead and stop that recording. Thank you. <laughs>